the 12 rules to live by on testosterone. This is rule number four, labs. Laboratory assessment, this is gonna be super important. And as you can see what's going on as we get up to number one, what I see is the most important features medically, clinically, for men that are gonna be on testosterone, this whole series is just for you. So let's get into the labs. When you look at laboratory assessment for men that are on testosterone, you really have to think about two things. Labs for the initial workup, so a man that I call a natty virgin to androgens, that's the initial workup guy. The next one is gonna be, once you're on testosterone, ongoing follow-up. So I'm gonna break it down to these two features today. So let's start off with the man who's a natty virgin, wants to investigate does he have low testosterone and he wants to know what labs he needs to do. First off, this is gonna be based on a history and physical exam, of course, from a very good doctor. And you're gonna see next week, that's gonna be rule number three, the history and physical, as we get up to number one. So I want you guys to know that all these labs I'm gonna review right now, they're on my website. So go to testosteronology.com you want to go to what we treat, and you're going to see there's either testosterone replacement therapy or anabolic recovery. And then you want to click the tab that says see lab tests. It's right there. They're all right here for you guys. I've made that so easy for you guys to reference and to bring to your doctor. Let's start off with the labs for the initial workup of a natty virgin who wants to know do I have low testosterone and am I safe to treat? And what am I looking at? First thing is a CBC, complete blood cell count. That's the white blood cells, the red blood cells, the platelets. Next, comprehensive metabolic panel. That's gonna be fasting, very important. It's got glucose, it's got kidney function and liver function. Next, hemoglobin A1C. That's gonna give you, in addition to the fasting glucose, what's going on with your glycemic index in the history in the past three to four months. Next, lipid panel. This is huge. As you guys know, there's the heart, there's the heart book, there's the prostate. Again, in the end of the day, all that matters for men is going to be, with or without testosterone, how's your heart, how's your prostate. Of course, there's cancer screening, and of course, there's mental health and other things. But this is where the money is right here, heart, prostate. Always hammering on that. So after the lipid panel, we have the PSA, prostate specific antigen total. Next is the TSH. You, if a man is looking into testosterone, he probably doesn't feel good, obviously. He's tired, maybe his sex drive is affected. Is the thyroid playing a role? And you wanna look at a, a TSH in my opinion, with a, a reflex to a free T4. You could talk to endocrinology guys, you'll see this is the basis. You could certainly do a whole thyroid panel. It's maybe overkill, but that's up to you guys. Next, vitamin D and urinalysis. Now, that's the basis for really a good H&P for almost anyone, basis. This is primary care information. Now we get into the testosterone lab. This is gonna be crucial to understand because so many great doctors that really don't do this for a living, they just check a total testosterone. You definitely don't want just a total testosterone. It doesn't tell the tale. You want a testosterone total and free. You want something that's called by a dialysis method. And that's, you'll see next to that LCMSMS. That stands for liquid chromatography mass spectroscopy. And that's that MS twice. The best one is gonna be it's a dialysis methodology. Now you wanna to talk to your lab people, all these different lab companies that are excellent. You wanna make sure that you're, you're understanding 
their methodologies, that they're really high quality. Again, more on that information for me in the future as I'm getting more into specific labs for you guys to have great quality assessment. Next, baseline, yes, a prolactin. Very important, so many doctors miss it. Moving on to the initial diagnosis, mandatory FSH and LH. That is so crucial to localize the lesion. The hypothalamus pituitary gonads is an axis together. If you have low testosterone, is it after the history, of course, these details are crucial. Is it from the tes testicles? Are they having a problem? Or is it something in your central nervous system? That's when you have to look together the total and free testosterone and the FSH and LH. Those are the gonadotropins. This is mandatory, and this is really endocrinology 101. But so many doctors are so busy, they seem to forget this for the initial workup. Also, you want to do estrogen, but do not get that total estrogen. It's just not great. It can be okay, but many instances, once you're on testosterone, I'll cover that, the total estrogen can be contaminated. And it's very important to understand you want to use an ultra-sensitive estradiol. That's crucial. Again, you could see my webpage. You could check these labs. They're all written down for you. Next and last but not least, you have the old school sex hormone binding globulin. And that's crucial to look at when you look at the total and free testosterone. You're going to get an idea for is there a disparity between the total and the free? This is crucial. And relating to the health history, have you had a history of PTSD, depression, anabolic steroid use, corticosteroid use, prednisone? Do you have other disease states, rheumatologic disease, asthma, where you've been a lot of prednisone? Again, it's crucial to understand these because they affect, they have late effects, acute and chronic effects on a men's androgen system. Okay, so that wraps up the initial workup labs. Now we move to the ongoing follow-up. So you're on testosterone. What do I check? Here's what you need to understand from the lab perspective. There's going to be two pieces of this. There's going to be ones that are mandatory, that I do, mandatory by a testosteronologist. And then secondarily, what else can you do with your primary care doctor or your, for yourself? Okay, primary, secondary, underneath ongoing follow-up labs. Here we go. Ongoing follow-up when you first start testosterone is understanding the half-life of the methodology. If it's on cream, most commonly for me and my patients, those microdosing esters, about two months after you initiate, you want to check, of course, Again, the total and free testosterone, ultra-sensitive estradiol. When do you want to do it? This is so in, incredibly important. If you're looking at the, it's, you have to understand there's going to be a peak and trough, right? That's why guys will inject these tiny doses like 0 0.1, 0 0.15 every day or every other day. If they can do it, if they need to do it, you don't need to do that. But some men do, and of course I allow them. You have to understand if you're giving small bolus doses, you're going to keep those peaks and troughs to a down low versus, this is called nadir dosing. When you take it every five to seven days, for an example, there's going to be a peak and trough, but it's nothing like given every two weeks. Some doctors, unfortunately, just don't understand that you don't give testosterone esters, ananthe, incipinate, sustenon 250. You don't give those every two weeks to a month. You can give it maybe every two weeks, like Sustin on 250. Some men feel okay, but however, it's gonna go way up and down. There's no rocket science on this. This is just pharmacology, peaks and troughs. So you wanna think about that nadir dosing. You kinda, of, what we do, physicians, these are endocrinology doctors, urology doctors, primary care doctors, any healthcare provider that really understands this, wants to see what it is at the nadir. You know it's going to be higher days before. So if you're injecting 0.5 every five days, you want to look at it the fifth day, 
you want to go to the lab pretty much when you would take the injection, but don't take it. And then there's that nadir, trough, it's a low point. And then you can look back and imagine it's going to be higher right after the injection. Most, most of the stuff on that dose regimen, 0.5 every five, it's going to peak somewhere around day two, 36 hours of day two. Every man is different. And you can understand that's why the flexibility, and this is for physicians, you need to be flexible with giving men different dose frequencies and different doses, always keeping the lowest possible dose. You don't want to just give a guy 200 milligrams a week. I mean, for most men, it's going to be way too much. Not to mention one big bolus of that, it's going to, conf the blood pressure goes up. The guy usually doesn't feel good. He can feel terrible right after. He can feel great right after. Then he feels terrible later. Again, this is so important. Nadir dosing is what's recommended uh, by most good physicians. Again, figure the nadir out and then look at the microdosing schedule. Here's the esoteric stuff, what men ask all the time. Doc, when I'm on testosterone, should I measure sexual binding globulin? Well, it's interesting. Sexual binding globulin will be minimally affected when you're on testosterone. And where does it go? It goes down. So therefore, the disparity between the total and free changes and the free liberates. It's just basic. A chemistry and basic biochemistry pharmacology when you're looking at how this works. Now, if you're taking oral steroids and you're taking Anavar or Winstrol, you're going to see the sexual binding globulin significantly go down. This is on itself without other antigens, without testosterone or with testosterone. But if you're looking, if you're on the lowest dose, guys, you're, you're, you're nadir dosing, you're using a micro dose, you feel good, you're looking at the dangerous prostate, heart, you're doing, this is how I work, this is how I do it. And it's, again, it's taken me a long time to get to this point, using real science and then anecdotal information with patients and then common sense, keeping the dose low. So sexually binding globulin, once you're on testosterone, in my opinion, don't need to look at it unless it's been a problem, unless it's been super high, and then you want to see how low it's going. That's the only time I do, I, I use it. Next esoteric piece with ongoing labs. FSH and LH, you use it initially to diagnose a man, but you definitely don't need to do it once you're on testosterone. It's going to give you confounding information. Even a swipe of topical testosterone is going to affect your LH and FSH because it's an exogenous androgen. So many fine physicians will repeat labs and repeat just everything, just everything every time. The testosterone levels, the LH, FSH, prolactin, sexual binding globulin, it's a waste of resources, guys. It's an absolute waste of, common sense prevails with, with science. So you need to look at testosterone, ultra-sensitive estradiol, there's, there's no question, there's no question. You wanna nail that in, you wanna use the lowest effective dose. But when you look at FSH and LH, if you're gonna use that, there's no data to say you're gonna use that to manage someone. And I stand strong on this. I would love to have endocrinology doctors, urology doctors, or any anti-aging doctors that are worth their weight to really argue me on that. Why would you look at FSH, LH once a man is on a, a, a regimen? Initially, you need it. But once you're on it, it's, it's, it's not necessary. It's actually irrelevant and it's just gonna, it's, they're always low. The exogenous, the effects of exogenous androgens on the central nervous system is just amazingly how, 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 how sensitive that is. And that's why the testicle effects are there, guys. There's, there's no question on that. And the fertility. Okay, prolactin. You use prolactin initially. When do I check prolactin subsequently when a man is on testosterone? I don't check it that much. If his sex drive is bad, if you're not, if he had prolactin issues initially, you're not sure, does he have a prolactinoma? Does he have some contributions to some systemic prolactin? Where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? So this is where you have to understand common sense. Okay, so that's the testosterone and the sex androgens and all these things. Okay, next, mandatory, ongoing, mandatory, as I look more into the research on this. Again, this is more cardiac stuff. The complete blood cell count, the hemoglobin hematocrit, you have to look at those relevant to the iron studies. 
I have videos on this. This is video number six. Video number six, increase red blood cells. We just did that. You have to do this yourself. So many fine physicians may measure a CBC and they see that polycythemia and they just stop testosterone or they just dump blood. It's super complicated, super complicated. You need to, you need to utilize more resources. You need to look at a complex of CBC, the red cells. This is the hemoglobin hematocrit. You need to look at that related to the iron studies. You see that video number six, increased red blood cells. Next, ongoing, ongoing. We talked about the heart, prostate. You have to check a PSA. How many patients have come to me from primary care doctors even, and mostly anti-aging doctors that, that unfortunately are just too, too much, they're too cowboyish. They're just too cowboyish. And they're not monitoring a PSA, and the guy comes to me, this is a man who's usually in his late 40s up to 70s, and his PSA is elevated, and he has prostate cancer, because he had prostate cancer, and he started testosterone, and it, it grew the development. It, it, and again, see the video I have on prostate health. That's video number nine. You see, it's all coming together. So around six months or so, you can check a PSA level. You could do it. Your primary care doctor can do it. Any man that's receiving testosterone needs to look at the heart stuff and the prostate stuff. Okay, so if you have a, a, a PSA elevation, you really have to pay attention to that. This is super, super, super complex, like the red blood cell stuff. Again, you have to differentiate. Is it, an on, is it a cancer that's burgeoning, uh, a prostate cancer burgeoning, growing from the androgen? Because it can be, it's possible. Versus BPH or prostatitis. Right there, guys. This is the BPH model right here. It's in my office. All the men, you men that come in, you, you see these models. So, okay. Secondarily, ongoing. Those are mandatory. Those are mandatory. These are obviously the secondary labs that you always have to check. And this is more primary care. And again, I don't do these for my patients. I make sure that you have it done with another caregiver because I don't want to pick up your primary care. That's not why I'm here. The app does that. You can get on the app, anabolicdocapp.com, where we have medical information, all medical information, not advice for men, all about taking care of yourself. That's the primary care aspect because I was a primary care doctor, so I know a lot. And if I don't know things, I don't say them, but I research them and I say, here's the data. Work with your doctor. An educated patient is gonna be certainly the healthiest and your quality of life is gonna be the best. Common sense, it takes work. Effects on lipids. So these are the secondary. Beyond the mandatory stuff with testosterone, the prostate, the estrogen, the CBC, you want to look at your lipids, your blood pressure. But that's, a, that's not a lab, right? So that, that's just a vital sign. So comprehensive metabolic panel. If you have hypertension, if you're on medicines for hypertension or chronic kidney disease, you want to look at your CMP, right, your, or your basic metabolic panel with the kidney function. Of course, if you have liver disease, you want to follow all these. See, this is based on the HNP. You see, all this is based on the HNP. And you're going to see number in the third position, higher than today, you're going to see that I place doing the history and physical is number three. It's going to be interesting as we go up to two and one. So, of course, if you have any other medical issues, you really want to see how testosterone plays a role with these. Common sense, though, for me, rules. The, the testosterone, looking at labs, you have to look at the, the relevance to the heart and the prostate. And of course, how you feel, your sex drive, your mood, are you moody? And that's why it's important to look at that ultra-sensitive estradiol. It is true. Look at the nadir dosing. Look at your free testosterone because that's what's going into your central nervous system. It's not the total. The total is being circulated around the body on the sexual and binding globulin and albumin. So, so many great physicians, they just don't know this. But you see how easy this is to understand? I'm giving it right to you guys. Okay, that's my part. Please do your part, gentlemen. I really appreciate it. Give us comments. This is going to be one of the biggest videos. Everyone wants to know their labs. 
Let's hear your experiences. Do you get all these labs? You can go to my website. You can get the labs. I told you how to do it in this video. Look at the labs. Click on it. Boom. It opens right up. So those are the labs you need to do. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I really hope this series is trucking right along and it's a book of 12 chapters. I really hope you're enjoying it. And in the end, I hope it really serves men well and protects you. Thank you so much.